Great, thank you. Uh, and thank you everyone for joining us today. I'm Gloria Negrete and the Executive Director and Founding Director of The Basement. Um, I wanna welcome you all for uh, joining us uh, this morning. I know we're all getting ready for the holidays, so I appreciate you being here uh, to join us. And then I uh, just uh, wanna um, let you all know that I do have pets in the home and, uh, and uh, family. And so if there are any noises in the background, please excuse me for, for all of that. Um, so Christine, if you wanna maybe move us to the first slide. Thank you. Um, and so this is what we'll cover today. You'll get to know a little bit about the staff as well as um, uh, a background on the basement. And you'll hear about a number of programs that we've got running this year uh, and ways to stay connected with us. And of course, we'll have some time for questions. Great. Uh, and I've been involved from the start, as I mentioned, with uh, the basement. And so uh, we really started at the basement uh, now going on five years ago at UC San Diego. And the goal for us was to uh, provide a program for uh, all students across the campus to explore their entrepreneurial interests and really wanted to create a hub and a network of sorts uh, for the students to connect with industry, to connect uh, with one another, uh, and then a, a place for them to gather and, and have the opportunity to work on, on their ideas and the exploration of, uh, of innovative solutions to market uh, uh, issues and gaps that they were uh, identifying as well as uh, potential opportunities to create solutions to social challenges that they wanted to address. And so the goal from the start has really been to create this uh, open community and hub for students across the campus so we work with both graduate and undergraduate students across all of uh, the majors. And so uh, we do work with students that are coming from uh, various areas of campus, including social sciences, arts and humanities, and of course, uh, engineering and everything in between. And so we welcome all walks of life at the basement. Um, and then we support students to work on these ideas. And so they may come with a business concept or an idea to solve an issue in a community. Um, or they may just uh, want to be part of a team. And so we support students that want to work on building their skills as well as students that are really looking to build a business. And so uh, our focus is on both supporting student development and those learning opportunities that translate uh, well when the students enter the job market, uh, as well as uh, supporting uh, the formation of a business. And so we work uh, on both uh, areas of focus with the students. Uh, and as I mentioned, we really take a community uh, approach with everything that we do. And so uh, the students that come to the basement and join us, uh, we stay connected with them. We continue to work with them uh, once they graduate our programs as well as uh, when they graduate the university. And so we're very much still connected with students uh, that um, work with us at one, uh, one calendar year and then may come back to us at some other point in their academic life. Uh, and certainly when they graduate, so we work with alumni as well. And then uh, that continued uh, approach with, uh, with working with students is really significant to us. And so we really do take, a, as I said, a community and family uh, network approach. Um, we also work very closely with the alumni network. And so we do have an expansive network. Uh, through the alumni, uh, we do graduate a lot of founders and entrepreneurial minds at UC San Diego, and, and that's been really instrumental to us in growing our network. Um, and then we recently brought in the Blackstone Launchpad, uh, which is a new uh, program in the last year uh, to the basement. Uh, it is part of the Blackstone Foundation in partnership with Techstars, and so that really did help to grow our network, and so that uh, network is really important and is one of the values, uh, value adds for students that want to get involved with the basement. Um, you really do have access to an expansive network. Um, and then uh, finally, I do want to mention that we're part of Research Affairs and the Office of Innovation and Commercialization, and so we um, are not rooted in any academic school. We're part of research affairs, and so uh, that's really important to know uh, because we are very open to all majors and, and all areas of the campus and, and work uh, in that capacity with students as well as faculty. Uh, we have a, a board, a faculty board that's part of the BER program, and it is representative across the campus to all the different schools and, and majors. And Christine, if you want to maybe go on, I think we're good with this one.
Thank you. Um, so I do want to tell you about the Latinx Leadership Program. This is a brand new program that we just uh, launched this year. Uh, we received some uh, funding to support student uh, leadership development uh, and really have been targeting our Latinx uh, population to support uh, their learning and, uh, and growth within our program. Uh, we, this is a pilot uh, program, as I said, we just received some funding to do this and we're uh, really excited to be able to work with students in this capacity. Uh, we have been prioritizing uh, certain students to be involved with the program, but it is an open program. Uh, so all students can certainly apply uh, and get involved. We have another uh, cohort that we're opening up uh, for uh, this year. And so you'll learn more about uh, timeframes that you do see on here that we've got uh, some, some uh, uh, areas of focus with the program where we do work uh, very closely with the students to uh, expose them to entrepreneurship, uh, connect them with industry, uh, and give them training uh, to support their growth as leaders. And that's a really uh, a key component to the program. And the goal is that we're providing uh, exploration and learning opportunities for students to really develop themselves. Um, and so the goal is less uh, around uh, building founders, but more so around helping students to uh, grow their professional uh, uh, development skills uh, so that they can utilize that as a vehicle to propel themselves towards uh, career paths uh, when they graduate the university. And so the program does um, also match students with uh, a individual coach that they work with uh, and also we provide uh, an opportunity at the end of the program for students to be matched with an internship opportunity. Uh, and again, the goal is to really support their growth uh, and trajectory uh, around their careers, um, more so than, uh, than helping to form you know, or build uh, founders or businesses. And so that's key. Um, but we also do connect them with our other opportunities if they are interested in becoming founders. And uh, th this is a great starting point for them as well. And Christine, if you want to maybe go on to the next, I think uh, I've covered most of this. So I'm going to turn it over to Jacques Shirazi, who uh, is a, a recent addition to The Basement. And he is the Director of Student Entrepreneurship for The Basement. And we'll tell you about some of the other programs we've got running. Right. Thank you, Gloria. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for attending this, uh, this info session on what's coming up next year. Um, so I am the Director of Student Entrepreneurship in the Blackstone Launchpad, which um, I will be interacting with all, all of you or participating in the programs. So let's start with kind of the first, we have a number of programs, as Gloria mentioned, the Latinx program is brand new. It's one of many, but the main ones that we have, it's, it's called uh, the Annual Startup Incubator which is, um, as Gloria mentioned earlier, it's, it's through this new partnership that we have with the Blackstone Techstar uh, organization, which is a makeup of other campuses across the state, but also across the nation. So this particular program is focused on uh, all year round kind of program. So it's open to all current students at UCSD. So we, we accept whether it's a graduate or undergraduate student who have an idea um, the purpose of the program is to really help you gain the entrepreneurship skills and mindsets. So understanding what it's like to be uh, an entrepreneur, but also what it takes to be an entrepreneur. Um, and then really take those skills potentially to apply to a startup, which is kind of one of the main purpose for a lot of the applicants. But also it could be a valuable tool once you graduate, right? So the things that you learn in this program uh, will help you um, beyond just your, your own idea or your own startup, it could actually help you um, when you apply for jobs. So these are very valuable skills. And you're also part of a, a larger community where you meet people and, and are enjoying uh, the interaction and the learning from, from the peer-to-peer -peer learning. Um, so we are, you know, we develop tools to really help you address anything, right? If you have a business idea, you, you identify a problem or particular pain within a system that you want to address that we can help you with that. But we could also, and we definitely encourage uh, those that are looking at social impact. Uh, so things are not so much um, focused around a business per se, a profit per se uh, idea, but maybe so solving a social or, or an environmental issue. And, and we have ways to help you do that. And uh, we have different program tracks. So if, 
Um, Christine, you can go on to the next one. So we have two main ones, and I have another one that I'll, I'll speak to in a minute, a little different. But these are two year long programs. So if you will, there's really two, two tracks, uh, the incubator, which is kind of more like the middle stage, um, usually is designed for, uh, for applicants that have um, an early stage idea who has some sort of a business idea that you've done. Maybe you've done a little bit of customer discovery. Maybe you identify something and talk to family members, friends, coworkers, and identify that this is actually a real need. Uh, there's a real problem to be solved. You may have done a little bit of that customer discovery uh, by understanding you know, how people are faced with this challenge and how could, could it potentially be addressed. And then you may also have done a little bit of market assessment. What, what, is, what is the market looks like for this? Is it a small, large market? Who am I targeting potentially and so on? So that's sort of that initial track, right? It's kind of like the beginning stage, a uh, little bit more than just an idea. The next track is definitely designed for those that are a little bit further along, right? Again, it's a year long program. Um, you have probably developed a much more, uh, you have a better understanding of what you're targeting and who you're targeting for, but you also probably have done more research on either it's a, a technical solution or maybe it's a software solution, but you've done at least one or more minimal viable product, right? So it's something more than just an idea, something more than just a lab test. Maybe it's you built something. Um, and then really the goal of this program is to help accelerate that process, right? So how do you go from a minimal viable product to potentially a, an alpha or beta uh, prototype? How do you really better uh, zero in on your market, on your customers? How do you better understand your business model? So it's really designed for those that are kind of go a little further. And the outcome of this, it's ultimately potentially be ready to either have a round of investments from friends and family, crowdfunding, or perhaps uh, joining another program um, that could potentially take you to the next level. So like a, a more established pro program like Techstar or Y Combinator or others. Next slide, please. Thank you. We have another program that we piloted over the fall and we're gonna take a, a, a hold on that one um, because we need to kind of rethink a little bit of how we do this thing. This is really meant around the idea lab. So it's really kind of the introductory space where you come in either with an idea, or without an idea, um, and we will help you either validate your idea, figure out how is the, is the idea worth solving, who you're solving it for, how you address this particular challenge and so on. Um, what we're doing right now is that we're doing this in collaboration with the UC, uh, UC San Diego Design Lab. Um, so we are going to postpone this track until spring. That's the, that's the plan that, we are, that we're looking to do right now. But however, between now and the spring, uh, we're going to be uh, likely to offer like pop-up pop -up sessions where you'll get a taste of what it's like to use design thinking and entrepreneurship together and helping you kind of walk you through that process of, you know, is this something I'm interested in, but is it something that I'm interested to apply? And this will actually require an application process that will start uh, probably as, uh, I, I would say, halfway to the winter quarter for the spring application. So, um, so that's, that's something to come up. If you have questions, we're happy to answer that. And then we have another exciting program that uh, was piloted over the summer, uh, which now we call the Innovation Sprint. So this is actually, again, a program that is outside the annual incubator. Um, this is open to all students, again, whether you're graduate or undergraduate. It's going to run for two quarters. So you have to commit to join the program in winter and spring. Um, and the purpose of this Innovation Sprint is really designed around getting people together to develop a solutions on a particular problem faced by one of the community members that we have. So the idea behind it is, in this case, you're not coming to us with an idea, or you're not coming sinking an idea. You're coming here to address the particular systemic challenge that we have in a community. So some of the partners that we have right now is uh, the San Diego Zoo, the Port of San Diego, the city of Carlsbad, and we, have, we may have others. And the types of problem that they have some might be social, environmental. The San Diego Zoo has to do a lot with their husbandry and how they're taking care of the animals and using technology to enable the animal keeper to do a better job of mentoring and managing the, the animals. The Puerto San Diego might be more about infrastructure, looking at how do, we, how do we create the next generation of ports that are gonna be more environmentally friendly? How do we deal with infrastructure like electric vehicles and on-site uh, generation of power? 
And the serial cards we might be looking at data analytics, right? They're collecting a lot of data using different um, tools. Uh, in this case, one idea that they have is to potentially help uh, forecast when businesses could potentially reopen uh, post COVID. Um, so that's some of the projects that we have, and we have others that we have. But in generally speaking, these projects are a problem statement provided by community partners where we bring students to really help solve it. And it is really constructed for you to uh, be exposed to an organization that you probably never uh, would have a chance to do it. And it's almost acting as a, a consulting engagement where you as students are gonna try to solve a problem and you'll, you'll be coached by us, obviously at the basement, but you also have mentors and you'll meet on a regular basis with the challenge partner, right? So you'll have a way to get updated uh, and uh, figure out where you are in that journey. And the end goal, obviously, is that you will have to come up with a potential solution. But this is really designed as a learning experience. We're expecting you to solve everything, but it will help um, bring the talent that we have on campus to the local community, but also it gives you a chance to see that there are amazing jobs here locally in San Diego. So once you graduate, you might be interested to work for any of these organizations. So I think that's all I have on this section. And I think I'll turn it at this point to Christine Liu, uh, who will be, who is the Assistant Director of Operations. She'll talk to you about the basics of the programs. Thank you. All right, good morning, everyone. Um, as Jacques mentioned, Christine Liu, Assistant Director of Operations. So happy to see all of you here today. So I'm just gonna go over some of the program benefits of joining our basement community. So you can see, this is just a snapshot of all the, the wide variety of benefits that the basement offers. One of the key things to mention is that we are intellectual property or IP free zone. What that means is any idea you create through the basement program, you would own your IP. The university does not have any ownership over that. So that's definitely a benefit for you all as students um, exploring new ideas. We wanna make sure that you retain your IP. As mentioned previously too, we have an extensive network of mentors. So mentorship is one of the, the top um, benefits of being part of the basement program. We have a group of mentors who are either specialists and they have specific areas of expertise they can help you with, or they can serve as generalists to give you just general guidance. Many of them are entrepreneurs themselves, so they can help you along your journey of entrepreneurship. So the mentorship is a key component to our program. We also provide prototype funds. These are just for the incubator and accelerator track teams. The prototyping funds are available for teams who have demonstrated a need if they can um, provide us with their milestones and propose ways in which they can use their funds to advance their ideas, they get access to funding. For our incubator teams, they can access a maximum of $1,000 for the entire length of the program. And for our accelerator teams, it's a maximum of $2,000. One thing to note is that the funding does need to be approved. So it's a reimbursement process and funds are provided after it's vetted that the the use of the funds is deemed appropriate. Some of the other aspects of the basement are limited right now just because we are in a remote setting, but I did want to point out the facility itself does have a wide variety of tools that students can use, anything from soldering irons to 3D printers to just workbenches, workbenches to work on hardware. Um, so that's one of the benefits of being in person. We're hoping that once things get better, we'll be able to have everyone back into our facility. And additionally, too, we also have 24-hour workspace available during non-pandemic times. If you haven't visited us, we are in Mandeville in the basement in level B2. And one of the things we still continue to foster, even in our, in our remote settings, is our sense of community. Uh, Gwari mentioned earlier, we really see ourselves as a family here. So we invite you all to be part of our community as well. We know that UC San Diego is a large campus, and sometimes it's important to find your specific group here. Um, in, the larger, in the larger university setting. So I invite you all to be part of our community. And for the programs themselves, they are CC credit approved. So the co-curricular record, if that's something that you value, it's great to have on your transcript. It demonstrates that you've done additional work outside of your academics that can make you more um, competitive once you're out in the workforce. And another perk of being physically in the space is that we do offer free coffee. So. Once we are able to reopen, we'll be able to offer that benefit again. So as Jacques and Gloria mentioned, we have a variety of programs you can apply for. All our applications are due on Wednesday, December 16th at 11.59 p.m. 
And we hope to have our applications go live this week. So either tomorrow or Wednesday, they will be live prior to Thanksgiving. That way, after your Thanksgiving celebrations, if you have some extra time, you go ahead and apply. All our applications are on our website, which is thebasement.ucc.edu. You'll have to click on programs and under the programs, there's a separate tab for each program that you may be interested in. You click on that tab and then the application will be listed on there. So important things to note is that applications are due Wednesday, December 16th. Each program has its own application, but everything's maintained on the basement website. Also, our applications are administered through a startup tree platform. So that one does require you to sign up for a free account. Um, the account only takes a couple of minutes to sign up. And then once you have the account, you can go ahead and apply. We also invite you to be part of our basement community um, as of right now. If you haven't joined us already, you can find us on social media. Our handle is UCSD Basement. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter with Facebook and Instagram being our most popular um, social networking platforms that we use. We also have a weekly newsletter you can subscribe to. The URL is bit.ly slash the basement news. And we also have our website, as I mentioned earlier, thebasement.ucsd.edu. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to email us at thebasement at ucsd.edu. So I mentioned earlier, Startup Tree is a way to stay connected in a virtual student entrepreneurship community. Um, it's also the platform that we use to house mentorship hours, whether that's specific for the basement teams or just mentors for the greater community. So if you're interested to see what's on there, I highly encourage you to join now. The URL is ucsd.startuptree.co. So it's a great way to meet other folks who are interested in entrepreneurship. Um, a great networking opportunity for both your peers and also mentors, and also all our applications are listed on there. So before I turn it over to questions, we do have a special guest here in the call. Ali from the Academic Internship Program will be sharing just some tidbits on the Academic Internship Program. So we do have a partnership with them um, where students can receive academic credit for working with the basement. So Ali, let me stop share screen so we can see your face and then we'll let you take it away. Thank you, Christine. Um, and as Christine mentioned, my name is Ali and I'm with the Academic Internship Program. I'm currently a peer advisor and our program allows students at UCSD to be able to get academic credit for internships that they're currently um, working on, whether it's paid or unpaid. Uh, I highly suggest looking into our program. I'm going to um, put the website in the chat. But basically, it is a wonderful way to continue to grow professionally as well as academically. I know I am a double major in communications and political science, so it was really important for me to be able to get this academic credit to stay on track for graduation, as well as um, secure a wonderful internship with ESPN and UCSD Athletics. Um, and one of the common themes of the presentation and info session today was networking and being able to participate in AIP and my internship has expanded my network, um, which I still utilize now and I hope to utilize after I graduate. Um, AIP does also offer a particular program called BISP um, for folks who are biology majors, if that adheres to you. Um, but definitely look into our program on the website. You can also reach out to our email, which I'll put in the chat. And if you are interested, you can set up a meeting to speak with advisors like myself or one of our counselors to um, relay your specific situation. If you have an internship that you're currently um, in the process of securing, or if this is something that you're interested for, for uh, future quarters. So thank you, Christine, for letting me be able to speak a little bit on AIP. Yeah, thank you so much, Ali. And if any of you are interested in learning more about AIP 197 and how to actually go through the process of that, we do have a recording from an info session that happened last week that we will have on our website by the end of this week. So be on the lookout for that as well. So now I'm going to open it up to questions. I did drop in the chat the links that were mentioned earlier. So you can join Startup Tree, the website, and also subscribe to our newsletter. 
But at this time, I invite you all to either unmute yourselves and ask your questions or go ahead and put your questions in the chat. Just be mindful, we are recording the session. So if you would prefer not to be on the video or on audio, you can just simply put your question in the chat. Hi, good morning. Or yeah, good morning, okay, great. Um, so I had a couple of questions and I wanna thank you guys for your presentation so far. I was looking forward to being a part of it. I want to know if you, your application, do you get placed into a small team or could you apply with another person? How would that work? If somebody is interested in the same thing that you are? Good question. So I can take this one. So for the incubator accelerator track programs, you can either apply as a solo person with just your idea and no team, or you can have an idea and a fully fledged out team. So it can be either way. So if you do have other folks who are interested in working on the same idea as you, you would just have mm -hmm. to identify who would be the team lead. The team lead is just Me. the point of contact. <laughs> so just the point of contact that we would be in communication with. So you wanna make sure that if it's you or somebody else that they're responsive, check their emails, submit the application. Um, so then you would apply including your information and the information of your other team members. Perfect. And then I, um, I'm interested in a couple of the programs I mentioned, the Innovation Sprint and the Latinx program. I was wondering if I apply to both, would I have to accept one or the other, or would it be um, able to handle both at the same time? I'm happy to answer that question. I think you'll, you'll have to choose one or the other. You won't be able oh. to do both. It's just that um, all these programs are, you know, significant commitment. So mm -hmm. you would, I mean, on top of your academic requirements, I don't think it would be feasible to do both. Gotcha. Because I, I'm a senior and so this is like my last two quarters. So I'm like, I just want to pile as much as I can do at once. Uh, but I'll, I'll balance. You're right. You're right. I'll do one at a time. <laughs> Thank you, you guys. You're welcome. Any other questions? Um, hello, I'm Tejas. And I actually had a couple of questions. Uh, first of them being like, since like some of the facilities that you used to offer before the pandemic, you guys obviously aren't able to offer those anymore. But then have you, uh, like, have you built upon some other resources or services during COVID like to help like to improve the team building or like to help the startups, like any other resources that you've come up to, come up with or any other way to help, to help teams transition in the, in the Corona in the pandemic world, like, I don't know, some online resources or something else? Or like, are you all planning on having some other resources in the future? Do you mean uh, in terms of resources that we make available to the teams that we work with uh, currently, um, mm -hmm. just to be able to navigate continued advancement of their idea? Right. For the, for the quarterly okay. track, the early track. Yeah, so we, we use a number of different resources and certainly one of uh, the, the newer ones that we just mentioned, the Startup Tree. Um, this is really helping, you know, in the virtual dynamic for us to be able to connect the mentors with the mentees. Uh, we use Slack um, and then we provide, you know, we're a, a pretty typical incubator program in that we are able to provide a number of resources to startups that are building uh, uh, and are really working to form uh, their business. And so we do provide other resources um, like AWS credits and a number of other options for students to be able to um, to really work on their idea, um, including things like strategizers. So if you're familiar with uh, the Lean um, uh, business model, we do use uh, the Lean Canvas. And so there are a number of different things that we provide. Um, and then we, you know, depending on the startup, we can, you know, uh, offer other recommendations that would be suitable to uh, what they're working towards because we work with um, software teams, hardware teams, and they're kind of all over the um, spectrum in terms of what they're uh, looking to build. So hopefully that, that's helpful. I don't know if Jacques and Christine have any other, um, other items they'd like to, to recommend. Yeah, thank you, Gloria. I would say that you know we've we've migrated entirely on a virtual environment, so all the 
all the resources that we mentioned are accessible through the website. Uh, all of them are recorded. We also use a graduate from the basement, uh, it's called EVT, which is a online platform to track all the different sessions and speakers that we have. So it's all available. It's not in, it's all in a virtual environment. Um, but, you know, I would say, like Gloria said, Slack is a great way to really communicate among yourself and sharing uh, opportunities. Uh, but it also, we just went to this major retrofit of our own website, so we made it a lot more accessible and a lot of resources are there. And then you also have access to us, all of us, you could actually meet on a regular basis. So we're trying to make it as convenient. The, the one thing that we cannot replace is the physical space and access to equipment. Um, that is not available at this point, but uh, I don't know that answers your question. All of you. Okay. Also, um, unless someone has any question, I had one more. No, please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so I was interested in applying for the quarterly, um, ideally for the early track, but like our team, uh, so my startup is, has formed a team and we're addressing an issue, um, an unmet need, but then we haven't conducted customer discovery yet. Or de we're currently developing a prototype, but it's on the way. So I'm wondering if, like, uh, can we still apply for the early eventually, or can we apply for the early and quarterly at the same time, and then we all can make a choice as to which one, which one's more appropriate for us? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I think you could go ahead and choose. I mean, you could apply. I wouldn't suggest to apply. I mean, it sounds like your your team has done some of the work. Um, each application is a review by a committee, so. Um, we'll, uh, we'll be able to decide on what makes the most sense uh, and how we could support you moving forward. So. Right, so I can apply for both of them at the same time, right? The early and the quarterly track? Um, but so, so right now, we, what we're offering is, um, it's really the annual program. So you could either apply to the, to the incubator track or the accelerator track. If you're interested in the Latinx program, but that might be really different than what you're interested. And then the innovation sprint. Um, right. The actual idea track is, is the application is not going to open until mid uh, winter quarter. So that that if you right. if you're interested, to apply for the incubate the idea lab. I'm sorry, uh, in the spring that won't happen until the application won't open until mid mid winter quarter, and you won't start until mid March. So it's only for one quarter. Well, right. that makes sense. Okay. Just to chime in though, what you could also, yeah. so what you could do is apply for the incubator track and then participate in the pop-up sessions sponsored by or put on mm -hmm. by the design lab. That way you get the supplemental learning in addition to being part of the annual program. Well, right. That makes sense. Thank you. Any other questions from the audience? All right, so I'm going to go ahead and stop recording.